One of the best ways to compare the first and second industrial revolutions, in my opinion, is to look at military technologies. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through two wars. We're going to look at the American Civil War and at World War I and compare those military technologies. You see here, first of all, even the uniforms where in the Civil War you've got blue and gray. You've still got some vestiges of that old, like, hey, let's dress up to shoot each other and that sort of thing in fancy clothes and all of that and here you see that war has really become fully industrialized and devoid of any kind of romantic notions here here's a very drab uniform because you're not going to church you're going to work this is killing people okay we've got this down to kind of an automated thing and in the American Civil War, one of the best weapons technologies that came about was the repeating rifle. The Spencer rifles were used by the Union soldiers, and it made a lot of people more effective, especially cavalry. If somebody was riding a horse, they've got a rifle that they can shoot several times without reloading. So you've got partly automated and partly human effort once in a while, just less human effort than a pre-industrial musket. Now we fast forward to World War I and we see the fully automated machine gun. <laughs> then we go on to artillery. You see the Civil War cannon, which the Civil War cannon, this isn't a whole lot different than a Napoleonic cannon. I think this cannon here is actually some kind of Napoleon cannon or something they were calling it. Napoleon was still cool back then, you know, it's like, oh, you know, that sort of thing. All right, but here is a World War I artillery piece. Now, that is not Napoleonic. That is 20th century. That is Second Industrial Revolution, and you're not really going, you're not going to have to move that thing back after it fires or anything like that. Everything's just kind of built in, automated, load it. You can point it to where it's going to hit a very exact spot, and this is the Second Industrial Revolution. When you look at ships in the Civil War, you saw the advent of ironclad ships where you just kind of put metal on top of the ship and we call it an ironclad. And this is where things were as far as you look at kind of a transitional point between the first and second industrial revolution. Whereas in World War I, you've got the Dreadnought class battleship. And this Dreadnought is just... Wow, okay? And you look at what's going on here, and you see this fully automated technology. You see that sailor in this picture is just kind of standing there while this thing loads all by itself. And that is just the nature of the Second Industrial Revolution. World War I is the war of the Second Industrial Revolution, really the culmination, which is why it ends in 1914, according to historians. Then we look at poison gas. Now, of course, this is something that has no parallel in the Civil War because the Second Industrial Revolution saw the experimentation with chemicals, and that included creating mustard gas, phosphine gas, chlorine gas. I'm starting to sound like, you know, Bubba Gump or something like that, but there are lots of types of gas used in World War I depending on what you wanted to do. But in the first industrial revolution you didn't have poison gas or anything like that so this has to do with chemistry in the second industrial revolution we see here a couple of civil war photographers that are sitting down for lunch and photography was kind of just coming out and in the civil war a lot of times you see battlefields photographed after the battle or something like that Whereas in World War I, you've got some much more advanced photography, and even here you've got a German film crew with an actual, like, video camera. So this is something that you know, certainly is not advanced by this time, but that these guys can just sit in a trench and videotape something. Now, of course, you've also got airplanes and all kinds of other stuff that didn't even exist before the Second Industrial Revolution. All right, well, I hope that gives you a good introduction to the Second Industrial Revolution. And if this helped you, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, TomRitchie.net. That's my website. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram. Check me out on Facebook. And I would love to get in touch with you if you have suggestions for future videos or something like that. But this one's done. Until next time.